Those opening shots were with an AR-15, that is a Rock River Arms upper on a Bushmaster lower, 16-inch barrel with a 1 to 9 twist rate, working with the concept of using a short-barreled AR-15 for home defense and focusing specifically on this military surplus ammo. This is the Federal XM193 5.56mm, it is NATO, 55 grain full metal jacket, and these have a 2011 production date. The XM193 out of a 20 inch barrel, you're going to have approximately 3,240 feet per second. You can see the foot pounds of energy is approaching 1,300. That drops off with a shorter barrel. My 10 shot average is 3,086. You can see there's approximately a 10% drop in energy. The bullet has a weak link or mechanism that is built into it, and that is the cantilever, which is that crimped portion where the bullet meets the brass. What's going to happen as the bullet enters soft tissue, this is about four to six inches in, the bullet's going to yaw or tumble and or fragment, although that's not guaranteed. Uh, if you do have fragments uh, and the energy is just going to create this stretch cavity, permanent and then a temporary stretch cavity surrounding that and any remnants of the bullet or the core could exit and penetrate uh, an additional four to six inches. So. Let's see what this is going to do. We're going to take this test outdoors. If you're using an AR-15 inside a home or dwelling, you're probably going to have walls. I've constructed a facsimile. This is half inch sheetrock here and here. Two by four. There is not any insulation or anything in between that, just a pocket of air. Uh, that is the case with my interior walls. You can see I've got one uh, stud here and another here, so I'm shooting in between those. There is my target spot right there. I have a soft target back here. I'm not going to use uh, the ballistic block on this, the sim test. I'm anxious to see if the 193 is going to fragment as it comes through here, and when it does hit this soft target, uh, if it hasn't fragmented, it should do so there, or we might capture some fragments. No guarantee of that, but we're going to try this from a distance of 20 feet. That was a lot of fun. Back up iron sights, I need to adjust those coming in a little bit low, even at this uh, room distance. But it's in the hit zone, as you saw. On the back, we have uh, about a half inch diameter on the accent. That doesn't really tell us a whole lot. The force of that energy busted my platform, not a big deal. And you obviously saw the water jugs. Let me go through those and see if we can recover any fragments. I believe this came through the wall without fragmenting. Here is why. This is jug number one. Perfect hit on the center. That's a nice hole there. And then it started fragmenting, obviously, open that up. This is jug number two. And there are some marks where some fragments came through here, and here, and here, and some other, if you uh, put this together, some other holes through here. So it was fragmenting as it hit jug number two, and then a larger fragment sliced through this side of jug number three. The other jugs were intact. Did not find any fragments, but that's okay. I have something else in mind where I think we can. Here's the second test. I have a block of the SimTest Media. It has been calibrated to match the specs of 10% ordnance gelatin, 20 inches in length, weighs approximately 50 pounds. I have four layers of denim over the front. That is an IWBA testing protocol. And I'm not expecting really this to have any impact on this full metal jacket. It's more of a technicality or a formality. Have some water jugs for backup. I don't think those are going to be needed in this setup. Again, shooting from a distance of 20 feet. I'm just busting everything today, but that can all be replaced. Excellent shot placement right in the center. Let's fold this down. All you have is just a small hole there. That's it, but I expect some pretty extensive damage inside the block. No exit from the block. I don't see where any fragments came out. The water jugs are intact. I've cut the block into two equal halves, taking the knife, running this direction over the top, centering it over the perceived bullet track, made a pretty good cut. I'm going to show this in a couple of different segments based on what I'm seeing already. I think I can give you the best presentation uh, using that approach. Here's the entry point. This is the left side of the block and you can see it's just a clean path where the full metal jacket is running to about the four and a quarter, four and a half inch mark and then it expands violently and quickly 
This uh, cavity is running about 2.75, maybe 3 inches in length. And if you dig in there, there we go. If you dig in there, without really pressing down, that's about an inch in depth. And obviously you can see a small lead fragment. This is really interesting. This is the right side of the block. Uh, you're looking at the bottom of it. The point of entry was over here on the left. And I found this as I was moving the halves over to the table. Check it out. There's the jacket, and there may or may not be some lead in there. We'll determine that in a moment and actually get a weight measurement. It looks like uh, that was trying to get out, didn't quite make it. It was stopped by the, the board, and that hole I'm pointing to right there, I don't know if it tried to come through that, met resistance, and then slid back a little bit deeper. By the way, that's at the 12 and 3 quarter inch mark, the far end of that base. One last perspective for you, and this is probably the neatest thing I've seen testing this media in the past year, and I almost missed it. This is the cutaway, so with the first four inches is cut away where that bullet was just simply uh, coming in. Then you have that expansion, that is the permanent stretch cavity. And by the way, I have found some fragments here at about the eight inch mark. Do you see it? There's the outline here, and then here on this half of the block, Right there, you see it? That is the temporary stretch cavity. I haven't seen that in handgun testing. I know it's there. It's a lot smaller. I just haven't seen it. I haven't been looking for it. But that is amazing. You can see where the shock waves branched out in this area. And obviously, it was here toward the front of the block. So from here on the left over to the right, that's about 8 inches. And then it goes into about 8 inches. That's going to hurt. But look at that. You can actually see the peaks in those waves and really over here on this side that is amazing have never seen that before and I almost missed it so what do you think is that gonna work for you that's definitely an option in this household the wall test was an eye-opener uh, observing that it looks like it's just going to pass through at least one set of walls and no, I don't plan on testing it on four, five, six walls and so forth. That's just a really bad scenario, and I just hope that doesn't uh, happen to anyone. This gel test was amazing. Uh, that stretch cavity there at the end was a real, a real nice surprise, a real nice find. But all things considered here, it looks like this is going to perform as designed. Should not be a surprise, especially at this distance. So stock up on the XM193. Thanks for watching.